Welcome to another episode of Customer Success Talks, Real Challenges, Experts Advice. This is your host, Byron Toruño, passionate about customer success. And just like you, I'm constantly learning about this amazing world of customer success. What a best way to do that, that talking to people around the world uh, with different years of experience, different perspective of a, of a same topic, going through different challenges and how will they resolve them. And today is not the exception. We have been working with um, Ramses to prepare this episode today. And I hope that you have fun, that you like it. And our goal is always for you to have at least one strategy, one initiative, or one crazy idea that you can implement on your daily basis. Who am I talking about? Who is our guest? And if you are on YouTube, yeah, I know that there's no surprise because you can see the face. Damn it. Our guest today is Ramses Busut, with more than 15 years of experience enhancing customers' experience and customer success. What were you doing 15 years ago? Ramses was actually working on improving the customer experience in different companies, and now he has his own as well. But First, let's talk a little bit more about Ramses. Ramses, you have had roles as Customer Success Manager, Director of Customer Success Europe, and also Global Vice President of Customer Success, even Chief Commercial Officer, and now the founder of the House of Retention. Ramses, thank you very much for volunteering and giving us your time today. It's a pleasure to be here, Bayron. Always happy to uh, share the knowledge and the mistakes uh, I made during uh, the last years. I hope that you're not going to get in trouble, though. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's start with the basics, Ramses. Let's start about um, talking about the house of retention. Can you tell us a little bit what are you doing with, with this new brand that you're working with? And uh, I mean, that you created. We would love to hear a little bit of the house of retention. Yeah, sure. So the House of Retention, I co-founded that with Tom, which is my associate. And we are actually an advisory firm for SaaS companies, nice. meaning that together we have almost 40 years of experience in customer success, customer experience. And we decided that we want to share that knowledge and improve uh, other companies with uh, our strategies and tactics. And so we actually help uh, SaaS companies to create sustainable growth on three levels. Uh, first of all, by reducing the churn and uh, optimizing uh, the revenue. Second, building customer success organizations. And the third one, scaling operations. So typically, ambitious SaaS companies uh, work with us to um, get strategies, get data in order, um, get their retention where it should be, uh, limiting the churn, and so on. And we do that actually with our own methodology. Uh, we have mm -hmm. re research-based, data-driven uh, methodology that help those SaaS companies drive customer-led growth. And what we actually claim to be uh, is to transform customer success uh, into a revenue generator. Because that's, I think, the true um, outcome of good customer success. Incredible. So you're tackling different aspects of a business, basically. Yeah, exactly. We try to cover the whole post-sales uh, aspect of the of a SaaS uh, organization. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. And and from everything that you said, I wanted to highlight that you use the word sustainable growth. And a lot of times we all forget about the future of. You know, we want we implement things. We and we forget about how can we continuously, sustainably, continue this process and not kill it at some point. Right. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I think customer success uh, and the SaaS business, by the way, it's a long term game. So to be successful, you need to think long term and not short term. It goes for sales, oh, signing the right customers in the right ICP. It's deadly uh, to sign wrong customers because it's early churn. And the same goes for extensions. The same goes for how you work on onboarding how your customer success strategy needs to work out, your incentives, the KPIs, the renewal process. So in fact, the whole business needs to be built with a long-term vision in mind. That's part of what we're going to talk about today, um, Ramses, the revenue. For me, and I would love to hear your opinion as well, the revenue, it's an outcome of, same as expansion, um, for me, it's an outcome of all the good customer experience, proactive approaches, 
and a lot more that we have discussed in this uh, in our podcast before with other amazing guests. It's a long game, right? And it's like playing chess. Once you start playing your, once you make your first move, you're already thinking on the last one, and and you're moving towards that. And that's a lot about a healthy renewal process. And Ram says the first thing that um that we're gonna be covering today, or the first challenge that we're gonna cover today is proactively identifying and addressing factors that can actually impact the renewals positively or negatively. And that's, it's easy to say. In the renewal process of the customer journey, one key to success is anticipating any obstacle that can affect that renewal decision. And I wanted to ask you, Ramses, which are the factors that are always for important to pay attention to? And how can we proactively identify those factors that can make that conversation a little bit awkward? Yeah, I think, first of all, um, and it's maybe a common mistake, but a renewal is not decided typically in the 90 days before the renewal date. Huh? I see so many mm. SaaS companies still uh, kicking off like a, 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 a certain renewal process like 90 days out of the uh, renewal date. I'm sorry, but it's a churn. Uh, Someone is leaving, whether it's an enterprise or even an, a low touch, it's decided many moments before that. Uh, the renewal, like you said, is the outcome of all the actions that you have taken along the contractual term. Mm -hmm. And so if during your contractual term, you've done everything right, the natural next step would be an, 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 uh, a renewal. Of course, you have natural churn, you have competition, that's for sure. But um, when you do everything according to plan, if you have a good plan, your renewal should be the logic next step. And in that plan, what would you include? Well, I think first of all, it's uh, uh, crucial to know how the, your product is being used. So do you have analytics on the usage, product engagement, usage trends? Is there an increase in certain modules, increase in um, uh, or decline uh, that can be an important factor to identify a potential risk uh, or a potential um, non-adoption mm -hmm. might be too complex or might be a sign that they are moving away, for example. So that's that's number one, uh, because then that learns you how they are using your product. And so you can steer and adapt based on how they are using your product. I think the second one is really to look into your um, support division. Yeah. Talk to your support colleagues. Your support colleagues are the ones who have incredible technical knowledge, but also have an incredible knowledge about your customers because they talk to them to, uh, over the phone and through tickets uh, day in, day out. Not only having a great support experience, timely support, effective support, uh, that's uh, a crucial uh, element into the product experience, I'll say, but at the same time, talking to those guys to understand what's living with the people that operate your product. It's right. crucial information. It gives you so much insights in what's going and what's maybe not going so well. And so uh, CSM should be best friends with the support team you know, to get that input uh, before a meeting, for example. The third one, I think, is also value. Uh, value. Does that company, your customer, do they see value? Meaning that have you been able to make it clear what your product brings to an organization? And do they believe that there is more value to come? Right. Uh, if they, mm. if you continue to provide that value, uh, logically, uh, there would be no, no interest to move away. And so the pitfall in this is, and we will probably tackle it a bit later, uh, I think, is uh, I have this concept which I often refer to as you don't know what you don't know, with which right. I mean that in if in a certain executive meeting or in a certain boardroom or you know where the decisions on the renewals are made and nobody in that room knows the customer success manager or any other person at your company, they don't know what your product is doing, they don't know the ROI of that product that it's bringing to their own organization. In fact, you cannot blame them for leaving. You don't know what you don't know. So you're not, you don't know what you're missing out on. So you actually cannot blame them. And then lastly, I think a great source uh, of, of knowledge as well is your service, customer satisfaction, NPS, not as such for the score, mm -hmm. because that's, uh, we can have another debate about that, but it's uh, a great moment to capture 
real life feedback, open feedback that you can use. It's a bit like uh, the support, uh, but then directly coming from the customer and it gives you great insight into the customer sentiment, I think. Those are really, really good points. Actually, they are really important points to take into consideration. And if we go a couple of steps back, and I'm literally going back, if you're on YouTube, you're going to see this. You also touch on the support side because the support team are, are not only working with one, two or three stakeholders from the same company, they might be working with several stakeholders. It all depends. But um, we work with maybe one, two or three. Our team works with more and having that connection with them, they can give us that information that we might not see because as you say, we don't know what we don't know. But also, what is your thought about the emotional connection beyond data? I think it's a crucial element uh, for establishing a mature relationship with your customer. Um, I don't think it's a decisive factor, right? The customer mm -hmm. will not stay with you because you have a good personal connection. In the end, uh, renewals and contractual commercial decisions are not based on only the emotion. It's a, it's a, it's also a great money, aspect. Right? Yes. So it's it's great if you are like, uh, let's call it the WhatsApp zone, if you can WhatsApp with your customers. And again, that's also something that's only valuable in the enterprise segment where you have let's, this, this personal connection with your customer. If you're doing it at that scale and you're managing a book of hundreds of customers, yeah, that's a different story yeah, than you're doing it uh, through, through webinars and through uh, success platforms and so on. So that's not relevant there. Um, but yeah, having an emotional connection, yes, definitely. Um, but it's not a it's not a decisive factor uh, on on deciding on on the renewal or not. I've I've lost customers that were nice to me and where I where I really wasn't. Let's call it the WhatsApp <laughs> zone, right? They broke your heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, in the end, you then you can you can. There's always a, a rationale, a reasoning behind uh, uh, them leaving. And I've never had a customer staying because I was a nice guy or I went out for drinks with them or something like that. <laughs> right. It's yeah, true. I mean, it's always good to, because I, I believe that there's like a happy churn, right? Sometimes customers are super happy, but unfortunately there's something going on that it's outside of our hands, maybe outside of their influence as well, that can make them decide, okay, churn, but there's a that's a certain topic. There's a, uh, that's another topic. Yeah, I, if I can just add one thing on that, yeah, of course. Uh, I think it's always good to part in good ways. Eh? Uh, uh, a great leader of mine uh, always said, "You always meet twice," uh -huh. and I always kept that in mind. And that's true because you never know where your contact person might end up. Tomorrow they become maybe uh, at a more senior position in another company that can become your new customer because they had this great collaboration and then this emotional connection can come up, you know, uh, but they said, ah, oh, you know, working with Bayron that worked so well, I can trust the guy. He has always delivered and had the best, uh, the best for the customer and uh, representing the product. So right. yeah, if the product fits the scope, I'd rather decide to work with Bayron because we had this great connection. So That's, yeah. That's that's, so a, that's, a, that's been a valuable lesson, uh, yeah. honestly. That's really uh, something I'd always stood, stood by uh, when I, uh, when I, I, I again, I, I got it from a leader myself. Um, and that definitely, uh, it has helped me a lot. Yeah, that's so interesting. That's true. The importance of having, keeping the doors open. Uh, exactly. Right. And you also mentioned um, value, which is really, really important. Believe there is more value to come, like make them think that there's more value to come and not only what they have received. And there's a, a really interesting article from our friend Tarek Slamini. He was uh, one of our guests here in the podcast and we talk about the customer, customer journey mapping. And he released a really interesting article that you're gonna all see in the description. And he covers the realized value and the perceived value saying that the realized value is the value that they are actually mesh that there is they, they are actually receiving that there are numbers that back up that they're receiving this value and the perceived is are they actually do they actually know that they received that value and um, that's why I'm going to focus a little bit more on value on Ramses mm -hmm. what 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 strategies would you recommend when it comes to delivering value to our customers especially during the QBR 
<laughs> QBR already that's such a word uh, that uh, yeah there's a lot of uh, talk about uh, it's a, it's another well, topic i know yeah it's okay. another topic let's, so let's call it uh, let's call it and uh, let's call it a, a business outcome meeting or like a value meeting right i think i the, ah. the, instead of a QBR like a value showing value or value perceived value, value anything anything with value so you're actually having those meetings not because it's like uh, the quarter has gone by you need to talk once like a quarter with your customer Oof. I, it's even a uh, word I hate more <laughs> because <laughs> okay, I will stop. It's, a, I will it's stop. a little bit off topic, but uh, a check-in means that you're just uh, checking in. I mean, okay, it defines it. that there is no commitment, no agenda, no perceived outcome, no next step. So it's just checking in like, uh, how are you? So what's the commitment from, imagine I'm like the, the senior stakeholder and you want me to be present at your check-in. You will be there the first time and you see uh, not a lot of agenda. It's just like a check-in, how are things going and, and so on. So next time you just leave it to your uh, operational person and uh, you're you're disconnected. And so you've lost an opportunity to talk to your stakeholder. So <laughs> check-in, is, it's, yeah, it's okay. about, it's, again, it's about perceived value. It's a, it's perception, right? It's, it's not a check-in call. It's just a check-in call, right? <laughs> But then how, like, how do you present the value? Like, what is your, your recommendation when presenting value to, to the well, customer I, for them to yeah, actually know? I, I, yeah. So when, when you meet with your customer, and I think for each different customer set of customer segment of customer, you have your own cadence of how much you want to talk and how, mm -hmm. how often and on which topics. I think it's always good to have like a look back, uh, realized value showing this is... Uh, value that you have realized for example if you're in 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 in, in the martech space let's say uh, it could be about um, revenue that gone through the the platform for example uh, if you're selling e-commerce e for example so how much of the of the of the value has gone through through the platform and you can offset that against the license fee so you can always have this discussion yeah we are very expensive mm -hmm. okay but if you look very expensive uh, and the license fee versus the amount of money it helped create it for that organization becomes a different story. Right. So, or showing metrics like if you're if you're uh, understanding the goal, and I think uh, let's take a step back, like you said, literally. <laughs> you're literally step back. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's you need to know what's the goal of the customer, and so you can talk about value if you know what's the the objective of the customer. And mm. showing the value is showing that you have taken steps to realize that main objective. What do we want to do? What's like the, the big hairy audacious goal they want to do with your and the compelling reason why they bought your product in the first place. So or which steps have been realized to getting there and also mm. being able to understand what has not worked or we should together do differently in the next period so that to stay on track because that means that you understand also what's working well, but also what's maybe not working so well. And so trying to adapt that. So it shows that you have versatility, that you have adaptability mm -hmm. as well. So that helps to create trust as well, that you know what you're doing and you're not just checking the box and going to the next. And like, it's, it's the same menu for everybody. That's right. also about uh, uh, value. And then indeed uh, um, being able to show as well how the platform, uh, the product, uh, whatever you're, you're, you're using, how will that continue to show value in the period to come where you can talk about features that are coming on the roadmap that are crucial mm -hmm. for uh, for that organization i guess that there's a lot of work with the product team in that sense yeah product product marketing uh marketing services yeah you need to understand where your product is heading uh, as a csm so, and and translate product features into something that's tangible for for your customer base right. so and that can be also with success stories case studies to show that similar companies look at how great they have been using our products like literally your competitors you want to be as good as your competitors or not yeah uh, and so that's a great that's a great trigger to perceive uh, to get perceived uh, to get perceived values to stay in the words of, uh, of Tarek. that's um, yeah and uh, yeah again all on um, being data driven as well it helps huh? uh, insights on, on on data like uh, hard data that shows the roi that has brought has been brought to the organization mm -hmm. there's it's interesting how customer success like each time that i record an episode and we have a conversation 
it could one topic can easily be broken down into several episodes because of the value per, per, by itself it's a big topic today we covered it is, three. It today, is a big it is yeah. a big topic yeah? when i give trainings and workshops for example to companies it's always a big it's a, it's a big topic to be able to show value mm. yeah? what is value for an individual customer what's a value for a certain cohort of customers what's value for a certain segment for a certain vertical and so on value it's linked to the objective of the customer so that's step one and then how can you translate that into a talk track that shows that the platform has helped realizing value and i think you, you can really smash it down what i always used to say to, to to members in my team is that you need to understand how your contact person on the other side your customer side how does he make his money What's his incentive, his bonus? How does he get his bonus at the end of the year? Try to know that. And if you know that, you know what his goal is and his goal in the company goal, right? So because his goal will be tied up to, to goals bigger up in his organization. So if he, if you know how he makes his money and you can contribute to that, if you know, if you know how you can help your contact person getting his bonus at the end of the year, you're doing already a pretty good job. Wow. That's a perfect opening for the next challenge that we're going to tackle today, Ramses. I, what I hear is that you're basically creating like a, like you are a spy, or you have someone in, inside the organization by asking specific questions, and that way you can pursue them to, to make a decision. And why am I talking about, like, this is the second challenge? Because the second challenge that we're going to discuss now is going to, it's about identifying decision makers and, and, within your stakeholder portfolio of stakeholders. I feel that it's so important to understand who are the decision makers to identify the champions, to identify the, their influence within the company, how powerful are they, who actually signs the contract. And it's important because sometimes you're not gonna have the same conversation with all of the stakeholders in the, in the, in the table. Sometimes you might, sometimes you might not. And that's part of the planning part. But Ram says, I wanted to start this challenge by asking you, what are some questions besides the one that you just shared? What are some questions that help that can help a customer success manager identify and qualify their, their stakeholders? You, I think it's important uh, when you're uh, working on customers to do some organizational mapping. Uh, you need to know uh, who in the relationship matters and who doesn't matter and what's their role and responsibility in the organization and so that's those are your stakeholders on different level uh, can be on technical level operational level business level management level uh, procurement uh, legal and so on and so on so you that's that's a responsibility of uh, of the csm and there are great tools to help you scrape on linkedin and get org charts and have have that built out for you, so you don't need to do all of that uh, manually. But that's it. Really starts with that, and um, you need to know who who does what in that company. Meaning that you need to adapt your talk track, your messages to each of those uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's an operational person, you have other points that you want to put into picture than if you are talking to an IT leader, for example. And who who would you think? Ram says is a good good stakeholder to have in a renewal conversation. Like well, in renew roles. and yeah, if it comes into a renewal conversation, you definitely need your champion on board, so your internal ambassador. Uh, that's mm -hmm. for one, uh, because he can influence positively the other persons at your organization. But only that one is not enough, and that's a mistake I see often. Uh, that you're only communicating with the persons we as a CSM we already know and trust, where we have this established relationship it's not enough huh? so uh you need his chain of command so his higher up uh, his manager his leaders you need to understand who will make the financial decision who will sign off on those mm. so and if you don't know you can ask uh, you, 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 you you ask your champion you use him so you can say that look we uh, if you don't have a conversation uh, with his uh, with his leadership, and you know that those persons are responsible for clearing renewal, and, and it might be tricky to not have to, to, to not have them included in conversation. You ask to your ambassador, look, we want to we are uh, we know that there is an upcoming renewal. Um, we want to we want to really show the, the the added value that we have created over the last period. It would be great if you could just uh, introduce. Uh, your manager within the meeting 
uh, uh, together mm. with you so we can show that uh, to everyone. Because otherwise you rely on your customer, on your, on your ambassador, on your champion to relay that information internally. But will you do it? You don't know. You're not in control. Huh? You, you give the keys of the car to someone else. So you don't know. So it's better than, uh, and, but they don't like to be bypassed often right? so mm -hmm. super in terms of perception, of course, and they like mm -hmm. to be bypassed. So you need to be allies with him so that he allows someone else to enter, enter in the meeting. And if you don't know who will be taking the financial decision, you just ask, okay, who in this com you know, who in your company will, will, will decide on the budget? So who, to who should we share the budget? Just yeah. ask, you just ask the question. If you don't know, ask, what's the worst that can happen? But I, I have a comment on, on that, um, Ram says, and I want to hear your opinion as well, because you said, who is in charge of that? And sometimes they don't like to be bypassed, which will might happen a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But I prefer at the beginning asking, how is this internal process done in your company? Like, how is the decision for this renewal? Or probably by then you will know, but at the beginning is how how are these are the decision to purchase or repurchase the product is done internally? Instead of saying, who is the person in charge? Because sometimes ego can play in in. Uh, what do you think about that? Absolutely. No, you're right. Uh, those are great questions to even ask before. Huh? Walk me through your uh, process. Yeah, walk me through your right? process. Walk me yeah. through your process. Uh, what, are the what are the different steps uh, that we need to take to, to make a renewal? How does the renewal work out? What are the criteria? How do you decide? And so on and so on. You can add, it's all coming back to the same questions, but yeah, you can ask them differently. To mm -hmm. understand, help me understand. How can I help? Yeah. How can and I help you? For example, if ego plays a role, you can all, all also say, "How can I help, giving you all the elements, so you can uh, defend this internally?" Absolutely, absolutely. Because at the end, we want to. You can leverage your um, your champions, right? Like I said, it's a renewal. It's not decided in the in the in the last ninety days or sixty days, thirty days, depending on on, yeah, on your renewal strategy and the complexity of your product. It's the result of many things before. But then you have, of course, the administrative part that's probably taking place in the last uh, in the last uh, in the last days uh, before before the renewal. Let's see. Maybe in the future, if people start asking questions and there's something that they maybe want to uh, hear. We can we can create a second part absolutely and and tackle more indeed uh, strategies as well because it's it's a big topic it's a big topic and same like a lot of other topics that we have tackled today, but Ram says I'm starting a new section in the podcast a really simple one and is if you can tell us a story of when you fucked up what happened and how did you resolve that if 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 you were able to resolve it because we never know. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking back on one of my first years as a as a customer success manager, so as managing my own portfolio. And uh, within that portfolio, I had a lot of uh, uh, business customers, but also a few very technical uh, customers. And so mm. I completely misjudged the 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 way how the renewal would work at those companies. Uh, uh, Talking the different a different language than than them, uh, I was not talking in the right terminology, not talking on the right uh, objectives. For example, that company's main objective was security and stability, huh. right? And I was just blobbing or <laughs> blobbing around. Now about, you're laughing. <laughs> nah, yeah, about new features and business and marketing and yada yada. They don't yeah. care, actually didn't care at all. You know, and that's that's that was a valuable lesson because that yeah. that really is showcasing that I did not adopt my talk track to the customer, but that I also did not ask the right questions because I didn't know that uh, uh, their mm. main objective was like security, stability, uh, stuff like that, and they didn't care about the roadmap and the next innovation in the marketing technology. Nobody cared that that company they were talking about. Yeah, the technical stability, how it would inter not interfere in the in their architectural landscape, and and the security was crucial for that company. I, I completely <laughs> didn't get it. 
yeah. because I didn't listen good enough. I didn't ask the right questions. And so I came with, with a talk track, which was completely inadequate. We were talking literally like on a highway line next to each other, right? I was running yeah. that way. They were on the other lane. Did, so, yeah. Did that Was that a physical meeting or was it a virtual meeting? Uh, a com combination of physical meetings, virtual meetings, emails. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, was, uh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so, but in the end, they did, uh, did renew. But um, uh, for that time, they renewed because they had no other choice. Right. <laughs> so I was so saved by the fact that we were locked in in the organization <laughs> <laughs> for once. So that's a happy, it was a happy ending. But then I knew that for the next, uh, for the next uh, renewal, I knew to, to be better prepared and to come with the right arms to the, to the discussion Absolutely. instead of, instead of having a, a talk track for nobody cared about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we we it's important for us to prepare not only knowing the person who we're talking to, but also like the industry itself. Like, who what is their their industry exactly and their language, right? Like, what are they? Sometimes some yeah. What's their main goal? Why do why did they buy the 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 the, the platform? Rams they is... bought it. They bought it for security. <laughs> so I completely didn't get it, and nobody told me. So I didn't know, uh, but I should have asked. Right. Thank, yeah. Thank and thank you so much for sharing that story because that way it will not happen. I hope to people listening to today's episode, it's time to close our episode. Unfortunately, but I have enjoyed talking to you, Ramses. Thank you very much for your time. And any last words? It was great being here. <laughs> you see, I can even I can even laugh at the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And remember, everyone, keep learning. Keep growing and let's keep improving the world of customer success. Until next time.